You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 407 for Sunday the 1st of May 2022. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chim, Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there, Jane, and how are you on this glorious, spectacular May day? The sun is shining, the cherry blossom is blooming, and the birds are tweeting merrily on their branches. You can tell you've had a big dose of Disney, can't you? Because that's not what I'm looking out at at the moment when I'm recording. I've got grey skies. I'm putting on those (laughs) rose-tinted glasses from my therapy time in DLP. (laughs) Well, I hope they they stay attached so you can keep seeing the world like that, Michelle. Do you know what? At the moment, with the price of sunflower oil or unavailability of sunflower oil, oh my my, even though I don't use it or cook with it apart from carrot cake, (laughs) it just sort of like it was that thing that it was on the news. It's like, I need to get some sunflower oil. Hang on a minute. You don't use sunflower oil, woman. (laughs) Shut up. No, stay away from it. It's much easier. Yeah. Anyway, let's, mm. let's move away from the worldwide oil crisis in the world <laughs> and let's have some escapism. Let's have some Disney chat. Let's have okay. some wonderful world of Disney hugliness. And uh, we're going to chat through a little bit of my trip. Okay. I don't know if you heard. I've been to Disneyland Paris. No, I'm not sure. I, mean, I, I realise that. No. I'm going to have a little bit of a chat about that and I'm going to sort of drip feed it over the next sort of few weeks so that we can still do bits and pieces of other things that are going on in okay. the world of Disney. Yeah. We've got some news and views and uh, some chat from me and thee. Okay, okay. So the first thing that I saw today when I logged on the old Tinterweb was something that got me really excited. Oh, go on, man. And I'm not talking about a certain cart case either. <laughs> oh, my word. I'll just say now, it gets me down a rabbit warren. I just click it on. It's like, no, turn it off. Yeah, walk away from the TV. Yeah. Anyway, it is mm. the new Mickey lid on the 50th anniversary refillable mugs. I know we have more plastic in this house than we know what to do with. But if I'm going to be going to Walt Disney World this summer Mm -hmm. and i'm going to be in a disney resort i am going to be investing in one of these said mugs because for the mere price of 19.99 i can get refillable beverages at all the disney resort hotels yeah it's it's something that we've always done when we've seen a disney uh, resort because they are just so 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 handy and it's like a souvenir as well isn't it and these do look uber cute now yeah you've got a blue lid with a yellow Mickey head or a yellow lid with a blue Mickey head. They're just so much more fun than the other ones. And, you know, when you're thinking that you're going on a big break, it does work out very cost effective because it does say for the length of your stay. Now, I'm wondering if I can push that so that I can have my two weeks on the holiday. Mm -hmm. Take it with me because it's going to be fantastic to use on the cruise. Mm Mm-hmm. And then when I come back and I have my morning in Disney before I get my flight home, I might just nip to a resort and sort of down a few uh, beverages for free. We can give it a go, love, can't you? Very I least. can try to see how far they're going to push it out because I've been before for two weeks and they've said, oh, I'll just give you an extra week on the old uh, zibidi dabidi RFID mm. chip. So we'll see. Yeah, they are always a good, you know, especially for us Brits coming over, you know, two weeks for $20, it's... Uh, pretty good going yeah and with it having the 50th anniversary on it there's some really nice icons it's just for me it's it's a no-go not a discussion i'm gonna have it and caroline and i have already had a discussion where we have our room reservation over at pop century and we've been on touring plans or i've been on touring plans the royal we (laughs) and i have worked out which room numbers we want to request that Ooh. is nearest to the lobby, i.e. the bus stops, so that mm-hmm. we, we can go and get lots and lots of refills and we can get on that bus before everybody else. So we've been quite busy. It's all about the planning. It's all about the planning and I'm uh, 
I'm enjoying my tarring plan subscription, I must admit. I'm getting my money's worth, I'm just going to say, get the money's worth out of it, Shell. Yeah. So that's a little bit of Walt Disney World news. Mm. I now want to hop on over to Disneyland. Okay, okay. Because not only have they seen the re-release, review and revamp of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Mm -hmm. Oh, my word. Yeah. Oh my word, I have I have snuck some videos in and watched them. It looks absolutely amazing. I love the longest float in the whole world that they've got <laughs> on there. And I know a few listeners have already been in the park and enjoyed it. Marla went last weekend and she was able to grab two viewings of it. She did say that she did struggle because you do have to wait a long time to get a pretty good view. But she is hoping to pop back soon and do the Plaza Gardens dining package. So I'll be oh, very nice. interested to see what she thinks about that, because we raved about it the other week on the show. Yeah, see if, it's, if it lives up to its reputation. Hmm. But that's not what I'm talking about, Disneyland. Is it not? Is it no. not? No? Okay. They're getting Fantasmic back. Ah, of course, finally. We just need to come to Disney World as well then. Yeah, 28th of May, showings at 9pm and 10.30. Mm-hmm. And I absolutely love it because of where it is. It's not in a proper stadium. It's in the park. Okay, if you don't want to see Fantasmic, it's it's a bit of a, a, bit, a difficulty going through that park at the park on a night. But I just love it and I can't wait to get back to Disneyland and see it. Yeah, it's it's really cool to be able to see all these things. I mean, we've talked about hugging characters and one thing another, haven't we? It's it's great to see everything, dare I say, getting back to, she says in air quotes, normal. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what dining packages they're going to offer with Fantasmic because they're going to do it, let's be honest. They, they've got an opportunity to print money here. <laughs> well, I was just going to say exactly the same thing, Michelle. A, it's something that their people are going to want and B, yeah, money opportunity. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I love to have while I'm in the Disney theme parks is a Rice Krispie treat. Okay. Because, one, they're virtually all air, meaning they're calorie-free, and mm -hmm. they're Mickey-shaped. Mm -hmm. However, if you pop on over to the Grand Californian, you will see the most amazing... Well, I can't even... I don't even want to call it a model. It is like art... That the fantastic chef team have recreated Batu, and it's in display in the lobby of the Grand Californian. Have you seen the images? Yeah, it's yeah. You can't say model. It's it's too big to be called a model, isn't it? Really, it's it's more of a sculpture. Would that be more accurate? It's absolutely fantastic. But the thing that gets me is in the middle they've got a Millennium Falcon. Yeah, and if if you could do go online and find the photos, and, you, and you'll see there's a, the photos I've, I've got, Michelle, that are with a chef in situ. Is that right? The word to say, I don't know. And so you can get an idea of just how big this structure actually is. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'd love to know how they do it. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're doing it because there's a special date in the calendar next week, Jane. Oh, what would that be, Michelle? May the 4th be with you. Oh, possibly. Revenge of the Sith. No. Yeah, absolutely. So, a.k.a. Star Wars Day is coming up. So, they've done this in preparation for it. So, if you are in Disneyland over the next few days, make sure you pop by. But they do this at Easter. They do this at Christmas. Isn't it fantastic that they're spreading it to other occasions? So, I'm asking you listeners, what would you like to see in the Grand California made from cake or Rice Krispies? Oh, I look forward to those suggestions. I mean, it's, what, well, what holidays could we be celebrating, I suppose? That's the question, isn't well, it? Well, for me, every day is a Snow White day. So I am wanting <laughs> a replication of Dopey with a little minecart with lots of gems in. That well, should be fairly straightforward to do, I'd have thought. Yeah, I didn't rest at six dwarfs and a Snow White, a cottage and a forest. Done. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is it. They could um, on a oscar winners or they could honor um the classic movies there's there's all sorts of things they could do isn't there but do you know where it'd really work my idea where over at artist point of the mm. wilderness lodge because it themes in yeah 
with the dinner that you can go and that will drive a lot of traffic to Wilderness Lodge because people will want to go and have a selfie with the amazing Rice Krispie cake of the Snow White Tableau. I wonder if they're going to have to keep people away from it because, you know, it would be tempting just to break a bit off, wouldn't it? Well, would you want to break off a piece of Rice Krispie cake that's been in a hotel for over a week <laughs> and a half? Yeah, maybe not. Fair point. Yeah. Let's let's leave it for their recycling and the bees. <laughs> End and of. the bees. End of, yeah. Yeah. Not for me. Mm. So that's a little bit of theme park news. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things that I've got caught up on at the moment, Jane, that I yeah. am obsessively devouring right. YouTube channels. Okay. Now, maybe it could be British TV at the moment is rubbish. It's a bit pants, yeah. It is a bit pants, let's be honest. So, I've been watching a lot of blogs, a lot of vlogs, and reading things and watching things, and, and literally it's it's becoming a bit of a problem. I think that there needs to be a All Ears Anonymous group I can go to because I'm addicted to watching Molly. <laughs> But you've got the the vacation coming up, Michelle, so it's needed, isn't it? It is your research. Yeah. Do you know how sad I've got to? Mm. I spent the whole of Sunday watching different mm. channels for their guides to how to do Genie Plus. And I've literally, I was watching it, pausing it, rewinding it, pausing it. And I've written myself a, a guide on what Genie is and Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes all mean I am now the world expert after devouring about 16 hours of vlogs. Let's, keep, let's fingers crossed they don't go and change it between now and then, Michelle. They better not. Um, <laughs> apart from if we want to decrease the price. Well, yeah, that would be, you know. But I will say, having just come back from Disneyland Paris and mm-hmm. seen what the queues are like and seen how, how challenged my body felt after traversing the park Mm. i'm gonna shock you now all right i am going to pay for genie plus when i'm in florida right okay for the full duration yes yeah i'm gonna cough up the 97 pounds i know it's 15 dollars a day but by the time i worked it out it was cheaper to do it for the entire time i was there yeah, well, haven't isn't there is some sort of British perk by if we if you buy it at the same time as you get your tickets type of thing? Do we get a little bit? Yeah, or you can, you, yeah you can add it on and it works out at ninety seven pounds for the fortnight. I think it's that thing if you're going to be in the parks and you know especially looking at the times of the year that us Brits particularly are likely to be be across there, and we know how busy the summer months can be. Um, and I think at the moment, I mean, I'm a bit like you, Michelle, watching various different vlogs and stuff. And it, it does appear to be that, and this could be a reaction to, you know, two years of not being able to do much, that the parks seem to have been busy for, um, like a consistently busy rather than having those peaks and trough. Yes, I know Easter's just been really busy in spring break. But, you know, I was seeing videos back in January and February and the comments were, oh, this isn't this is busy for this time of year. So it perhaps is a sensible idea to take that plunge into the land of Genie Plus. Before anyone wants to judge me, you try going to Florida in August and <laughs> then we'll talk, OK? Yeah. We'll have that conversation because it is humid, it's hot, it's busy. The last thing I want to be doing is standing in a line for an hour and a half for living with the land. And I've seen it yeah. already. Yeah. I ain't doing that. If it means that I can pay just under £100 to get on more attractions, and when you think about it, I'm paying 1500 to fly there. I'm paying gracious knows how much for my hotel. Mm. It's a small amount to pay. It's a small surcharge to enable me to have that ability to do my rides and then go to my hotel, get showered, get changed, have a relax, and then know I have got a lot of attractions all stacked up on my Genie Plus to go back to the park to without having to queue. 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think when, when it was first announced, you know, the, there was a little bit of resistance to it because obviously this is something that we've had previously free um, with the fast pass system with Disney. So there is a little bit of like, it's kind of tinged with a little bit of like, oh, why? Um, mm. You know, because we've had it for so many years in a free format. Um, and I'm, I think there's probably still issues with it from what I, I keep mm. seeing online. I think there is a little bit of a concern that, there's so many lightning lanes that are being, or sorry, Genie Plus lanes or whatever they're calling them, being given out that the knock-on effect on standby lines and you get, you you know, you're joining the lightning lane lines that are still relatively long as well. So I, mm. I suppose it's still only the early days because it was only, what was it, October, November time that it was launched. So there's probably lots of algorithms, she says using a big word, that um, are working very, very intensively behind the scenes to try and ensure that the guests have the best experience possible because you don't want people paying out for something and then still finding themselves in a long line mm. so be interesting to watch it develop see if, if they do tweak or change it and look forward to hearing your experience of it later on in the year yeah absolutely right i've just come back from paris you have indeed and I did a tour of the hotel on the old uh, Facebook Live. Mm. And if you've seen it, great. Those were my initial views of the hotel, New York, the Art of Marvel. Having stayed in it for three nights, mm. are my views the same? Oh, I don't know, Michelle. I'm going to tell you. So... <laughs> Firstly, and I'm going to use the analogy of a beef burger here, Jane. Okay. Right. There are many beef burgers you can buy. And mm -hmm. if you are budget conscious, you'll probably buy a frozen packet of burgers that are labelled burgers. Right. You might not even specify it is beef. Mm. But it's a burger. Mm -hmm. Then you can maybe pay a little bit more money and you can get a beef burger. It might mm. be in the fresh counter. A little bit more money, you could get an Aberdeen Angus or a Kobe beef burger. Ooh. Or you can leave the supermarket completely and go direct to a butcher's and get the best of the best of the best of the best, a nice steak burger. Mm. Best meat, best quality, good provenance. Mm -hmm. Now... You are all eating a burger. You will all get a burger experience. But the price point you pay is what you can afford. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to booking a Disney hotel, they're all amazing. They're all yeah. a bed. They're all a place to stay. Yeah. And they offer different things, just like the burgers. So yeah. bit bland, delicious taste, free range, organic, and so on. Mm-hmm. So when we were thinking about our hotel stay, mm. we needed to consider a whole range of different things. And when you're booking your trip to Disneyland Paris particularly, you have to have that in mind over how you want to have your trip. What does your trip look like? Because the number of people that email and say, Michelle, what is the best Disneyland hotel? Mm. Well, it's it's based on a number of things. Firstly, it's your budget. Yeah, that's always going to be top of the list, isn't yeah. it? Now, if you want to splurge and have one trip to Disneyland Paris and you want it to be amazing and you want to have a bit of rest while you're there and not wear yourself out, then splurge and go on a hotel that is as near to the park as you can afford. Mm -hmm. But you might not be able to do that. No. So... Obviously, the Big Pink Hotel, the Disneyland Hotel, is the nearest, the closest to the park. And how amazing is it in Paris that you can leave Main Street and within seconds be mm. in your hotel? Overlooking Main Street, almost. Firework view. Mm -hmm. The poshest of the lot. Yeah. Now, at the moment, you can't do that because it's been refurbed. Yes, which I think is, is well over, overdue. It, it, was, it was beginning to look a little bit tired, I think, yeah. to be fair to say. But that hotel has the benefit of you being able to leave the park at two o'clock, being able to shower, change, have a nap and still be back in that park at half past three. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas if you're staying in a Disney hotel that's a little bit further out, that hour and a half window is going to be a little bit bigger because it's physically not possible to make the distance from Main Street to your hotel and back within that. No. And then the good partner hotels, that hour and a half ain't going to happen because you're going to have to schlep onto a bus or a train to get to your hotel. Yeah, they're a lot further away, aren't they? They are. But those hotels have their place and their advantage because you can have multiple, multiple trips a year. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on how you want to do it. Yeah, lots of factors. Now, we had to consider, one, the fact I am still struggling with a pretty poorly back. Yes. So not very mobile. Two, we needed to consider Caroline's health as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted a park. We wanted a hotel as close to the park as we physically could get. And the nearest, Hotel New York, mm-hmm. Caroline, a little bit of a Marvel fan. She wanted <laughs> to check it out. We'd both previously stayed at the Hotel New York and we'd enjoyed the ability to walk out of the hotel, go through security, meander through the Disney Village and then straight into the parks. Yeah. And it's a fairly, you know, you can realistically, if you bimble... <laughs> it's a 15-minute walk, let's be honest. Yes. Do we need, do we need to um, give the definition of bimble, Michelle? Well, bimble, <laughs> where you're sort of walking past the shop windows and peering yeah. in but not going in. Not rushing your way in, just making, yeah. making your way in gradually. Yeah. yeah. I'd say Sequoia is the next out on distance and that's probably another five minutes. Yeah, depending on whereabouts on the, on yeah. the resort you are, yeah. Now, obviously, if you wanted to, Hotel New York does a bus. But for me, it didn't mm. make sense waiting no. for a bus, getting a bus, and then having to go through the bag check with everybody else who was coming through the train station and the bus stops. Yeah. You don't do that if you come in no. through the hotel guest entrance. No, I mean, I, I would would say, regardless of which hotel you're staying in, yes, some of them are, are going to be a bit more of a walk, but walk it every time. Mm. Well, we did. We did that. It's not a problem. You know, every time I walked past Starbucks and said, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> anyway, back to the hotel. So, yeah. we arrived on the Tuesday morning. We were very lucky on Tuesday. We got on an earlier shuttle. So, that made it a little bit earlier at the Hotel New York. And mm. we left our cases in the car and went to go and check in. Now, for those of you who've never been to Disneyland Paris or perhaps not stayed in the Disneyland, in the Disney hotels there, all of the hotels that are owned by Disney have a bag check area where you put your bags, your cases, anything, through a airport security scanner. Mm. So that to me, yes, it's a bind, but it's keeping me safe. Yeah. So we put all that through and we walked into this most magnificent luxurious of space atrium and Mm. it was surrounded by immediately on our right a trio of marvel shields and then super impressively three massive statues of screen one outfit I don't think there were one on the screen, but they looked like they could have been. Yeah, yeah. And that was facing onto the reservation area. We went over, they welcomed us, told us our room wasn't ready. We did the registration, we got our park tickets. They gave us a super exclusive copy of the Bugle, which was pristinely put in the room and never touched ever again. (laughs) Because, uh, you know, we've got to look after those Nice little freebies. Mm. And uh, we decided to go off into the park. Okay. So, forward wind, later in the day, we decided to bimble back to the hotel because we wanted to check in because we were so excited. Right. So, we went and got our cases, back okay. through security and up to our room. Our room was on the second floor and it had a garden view. Nice. And at this point, I do urge you to go back, scroll down Disney Dream Girls podcast family to the live I did because you'll understand things a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But I will talk a little bit about everything. So as you get out of the elevator, 
you will see some absolutely huge pieces of Marvel related artwork on the walls mm. and they were amazing but it was it was drip fed Jane it wasn't like they were everywhere no it, it they were considered in yes. their yeah. selection and they've got a whole range of different artists to do unique art for mm. the theme park and these could be bought in a book that they sold in the gift shop which you know, you could pull them out and they, you'd make a little poster and put them mm. on the wall in a frame or just preserve it and keep it as a as a coffee table book yeah, or something. Yeah. Anyway, back to the room. So we walked to our room. All the rooms are by card entry, so we did that and we walked in. And as you walk in, there's like a little corridor. To the mm-hmm. left-hand side, there was the bathroom and to the right, there was the usual where you have a little small wardrobe. I will say about the wardrobe that, yes, it did have lots of hangers, Mm. but half of that wardrobe was taken up with an iron and ironing board. So I'm just thinking, if you're going with a little girl or a little boy who have got lots of fancy little prince and princess outfits, Mm. it took up a bit of space. But next to it, there was like a bench and a hanging rail above it where... I kept my case and you could hang more things on there and there was a shelf above as well. To the side then, there was a set of five drawers of different sizes and the safe and oh my word, can I just say, I could not believe how amazing that safe was. (laughs) It had the most ingenious thing in it. Mm -hmm. When you opened the safe, a light came on. bit like a fridge. It was amazing. Who would have thought something so simple could be so fantastic? (laughs) But it gets better, Jane. Mm. In the back of the safe, there was a socket for you to put in your phone charger or a laptop charger or an iPad charger. I must admit, I did see that, Michelle, and I thought, that's clever. I like that. Yeah, because, you know, there has been stories of, unfortunately housekeeping staff taking things from rooms so if it's in that safe being charged while you're say perhaps downstairs having dinner or you're going to the spa or something Mm, definitely brilliant yeah um so the bathroom yeah on the video that i did i raved about the bathroom however hey i gotta say i can feel a butt coming on now after using it for a few days i would just like to say There is no point giving a room a sink the size of a trough. It was huge. And then there was nowhere for us to put all our little bottles of perfume and cosmetics. Because it was taken up by this humongous trough, which took forever to fill up. Mm. Because it was humongous and it was a waste of water. Yeah. So a little bit smaller on the sink. Mm-hmm. We had a huge big mirror and I liked the fact there was a side mirror that lit up that you could do your detail work or shave and there were charging points. Mm. There was also a speaker in the ceiling so what you was listening to or watching in the lounge could be piped in while okay. you were having yeah. a number one or a number two or a shower or a bath. <laughs> um, mentioning the bath, the, mm. it was a standard height bath which caused a problem with someone with a back problem because there were no grab rails to help me in and out of this really high bath. Oh, okay. Tricky. Uh, It had a really good force of water on the uh, shower and it had a trio of fastened in Hotel Marvel Mm. scents, shampoo, conditioner and shower gel. Right, okay. The shower gel was to die for. It had this amazing hint of uh, Thai green basil type flavours. Oh, it was amazing. No, no little freebies to bring home, though? Oh, yeah. But I'm not mentioning it on the podcast. Oh, OK. There was a soap that I've brought home and a manicure set as well. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we used that shower gel to wash our hands, to anything it was like Mm. shower gel give me more shower gel um and then it had a little glass sliding door which was like hang on a minute 
If Caroline was in the shower, would I seriously walk through the bathroom, go to the toilet and close the sliding door? No. <laughs> it just didn't work. And the closing door didn't go all the way to the end anyway. It left a little gap. Oh, okay. Strange. Which was super weird. And we couldn't fathom that out. It seemed a bit irrelevant to put a door on, mm. you know, because I wouldn't go in that bathroom while Caroline was in it. No, full stop, yeah. So I know they were dealing with the sizings and everything of the room before, but they didn't really have to put... You know, they could have just put like a modesty wall up or something. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyway, that's my little gripe about that. So we're now into the main body of the room and we got two deliciously large beds with the most amazing little sort of mini sofaette, I'm calling it, on the base of each bed that was a little bit lower level and padded. Mm, little bonquette thing. Yeah. Mm. Now, during the day, it was a great place for holding my ears, but in the morning, it was fantastic for sitting on and fastening your shoes. Uh -huh. It was so convenient. It really, really was such a simple idea. Mm. In the room, we had a Lavazia coffee machine. Oh, my yeah. word. Oh, my word. I didn't buy one single coffee while I was there because I just used that constantly. It was amazing. Nice. Really nice, nice. Really good. But they only left us with two espresso reusable, uh, sorry, disposable cups and two latte sized. Well, the room was meant for four. Oh, that's a bit stingy then, isn't it? I felt that was a bit stingy, especially when there were six glasses in the entire room, which was <laughs> overly generous. Yeah. But the coffee machine was good. Next to the coffee machine, there was a kettle. The kettle was the world's most complicated to take the lid off. And on one occasion, the lid fell off and I nearly scalded myself. Oops. It was rushed straight into the bathroom, cold water. Oops, that is Not good, not good. The highlight of the room was the mirror. <laughs> because you click it on and it turned into a TV. Yay. And do you know what? I have been able to um, find the musical soundtrack of the Hotel Marvel because it was amazing. It was so good. So mm. good. Um, big moan about the TV, though. Okay. Okay. Yes, we could watch an old Epcot show. Brilliant. Fantastic. We loved that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we could find out about park hours and watch little insight videos about all the different resorts that Disney have across, you know, the USA and Europe. Mm -hmm. But they missed the trick. They did have access to Disney Plus. Right. But it was your own Disney Plus account. Oh, so you had to log in. Yeah. Now, I didn't feel secure enough logging into a hotel's TV with my account. And yeah. I think Disney missed a trick here. Disney should have put in the free Disney Plus because what's it going to do? It's going to mean people are going to fall in love with it and think, wow, this is good. I'm going to subscribe at home. Well, I was just going to say exactly the same thing. You'd have, you would have thought it would have been prime advertising for said channel. Look how lovely it is. Look how much it on, on here there is for you to watch. Yeah. We're letting you have this sneak preview. Go away and buy it, please. Yeah. However, if you were a Marvel fan, there were reams of amazing content that you could watch that was unique in that uh, place. So that was a really good point. We didn't make use of that because we're not that kind of people. But <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. And the room had two little chairs as well and a dressing table chair. So there was plenty of places where you could sit so you didn't have to sit on the bed. Right. So, Yeah. There was a bit of a negative that Caroline and I felt that we right. are both of the viewpoint as when we get back in the hotel, it shoes off. Yeah. Which is pretty much how I run my house. Shoes off at the door, thank you very much. Mm. Sorry, Americans, you probably don't understand this. This is because the majority of UK houses are carpeted. Mm. So if you come in wearing shoes that may be wet and damp, it makes our carpet smell like soggy dog. <laughs> just FYI, just so that you know. So you went into the room and it was like a wood floor. Mm. And then around the bed, it was carpeted just at the base bit. 
Yeah. And it had this little metal strip running down the middle of it. So if you were to walk on that in your bare feet... A little bit cold and sharp. It hurt. Mm. So that's a main... Caroline was very... It was like, oh, I've done that stupid thing again. Mm. So, yeah. That was one thing that really, really annoyed her. Um, The lighting in the room was fantastic. Really jazzy light fittings. I absolutely adored them. I thought they were dead good. We also had a fridge. We had some underbed storage. Everything in the room was really, really good. It worked so well. And the fact that we had European plugs, an English plug and lots of USB ports, we were able to charge everything up overnight. Not a problem. Yeah, this is happening more and more, isn't it? The, the putting in those sockets for the non-standard stuff. And must admit, hotels with USB is like a godsend. Mm, absolutely. Would I recommend that hotel? Yes, 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 yes. Good, good, good to hear. Yes, because it was amazing. It was the bed. Oh, my word. I came home to what I thought my bed was comfy. No. Could I sleep on that first night back? No. I felt my bed now was uncomfy. And my bed's a very expensive mattress. No, no, no. Wow. That hotel had the most amazing comfy beds. And we had room service every day. So our beds were made. The the towels were changed. We got fresh coffee and tea facilities mm. okay we didn't get fresh soap so we only got one bar yeah yeah hey ho and neither of us would have used it anyway because it's sat on my windowsill at the moment waiting to be posted off to someone because <laughs> first thing we did is we went round the room and said right what can we take home well that's whatever disney fan does isn't it yeah i've got a notepad i've got a pen i've got a manicure set i've got <laughs> some really nice coasters that say hotel new york out of marvel Yeah. We did have people contacting us and saying, if you could manage to fit in your car, the curtains and the bedspread would be really grateful. (laughs) But we didn't. It's not so much fitting them in the car, Michelle. It's it's walking out of the hotel without anybody noticing, I think would be the tricky part. Yeah, true. True. Well, I could have just worn the curtains as like a a dramatic um, new Marvel character. Your superhero, your superhero yeah. cape. Yeah, I could have done something. I'd have shushed it up a bit. So what <laughs> else can I tell you about the hotel? It had a very nice little boutique, a little shop mm-hmm. that sold some exclusive bits and pieces that you could only find at the hotel. It had two bars. One of them mm-hmm. was the Skyline Bar, which I will review on a later show. Mm-hmm. It has two restaurants, one of them being a buffet and the other one being a... Um, fixed price or a la carte menu again we managed to eat there something i'll talk about at a later point it has a full service swimming pool and spa Mm -hmm. so lots of your typical facilities you would expect of a hotel of that caliber Mm. and as i said at the moment it's the closest to the park yes and whilst uh, the disneyland one is is being referred I, i would imagine it's going to be quite popular Yes, it was fairly busy while we were there, I will admit, but we got into the Skyline Bar without much of a wait. I think we had maybe five minutes. Mm. So, you know, the the restaurant, we got there as it opened. Admittedly, towards the end of the night, it was quite busy, but we got there when it was nice and quiet. We got some amazing pictures and so on. So I highly recommend it. If you are a Marvel fan and going to Disneyland Paris, just go and visit the hotel and walk around and see the artwork Mm. which you are able to do if it fits in your budget and you want an amazing trip that would be the hotel i would recommend for you wow but if you want to go on a cheaper option there are disney partner hotels and there are even hotels that aren't even connected to disney and you have to go on a train to get there but just bear in mind if you like to have an afternoon nap it eats into your park time because you could be missing for two, two and a half, three hours. Yeah, that's the only consideration, well, not the only consideration, but a big consideration to take in, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to record some more bits and pieces for you over the next coming weeks with regards to my Disneyland Paris trip. Going to be doing a very interesting one over for our Patreon supporters on the top 20 Disneyland Paris snacks 
you should munch. Ooh. And we've ranked them all in order from wow. the uh, don't give to somebody you <laughs> even don't like and the ones it was like, oh my word, eat this every day. Right. So I'll record that with you, my lovely, at some other point. Cool. If you do have any questions with regards to staying at a Disneyland Paris hotel, please get in touch with myself and Jane. We have both visited and stayed at a range of Disney Mm -hmm. options on site and off site. And we're more than happy to help you out, making sure that you get the best place for your Disneyland Paris trip. Mm. You can email us at info at DisneyDreamGirls.com. You can tweet us or Instagram us at DisDreamGirls. You can join us over on our Disney Dream Girls podcast family on that there Facebook. But until next week, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.